What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And those of you that are new to this channel, welcome to Ballistic Garage. So, on the last episode, I intended to put the motor in the car. What I didn't intend was us taking the entire video to just put the timing chain in there. But I figured I'd just make it a whole episode and just show you guys how to do that. And I know there's plenty of videos on YouTube that shows us, you know, shows people how to do that. But anyways, I can't promise you that we're gonna be putting the motor in the car in this episode, but we're getting very close. So either it's gonna be this episode or next episode, guaranteed. We're gonna have the motor in the car, I promise you guys. But you guys are gonna love this episode regardless because I got a lot of goodies for the engine. So our plan today is to prep, finish prepping the engine and then prepping the engine bay, like putting the, uh, the hasport mounts back together because I took it apart and I Cerakoted it. Um, the tungsten, same as the, the motor because I wasn't really feeling the polish. We're gonna have to put the intake manifold together. You guys are gonna love that. As I took it apart to ceramic coat it because Jay didn't love the polish look. I was gonna Cerakote that too, but he liked the polish look, so I decided to ceramic coat it so we don't get any fingerprints and stuff like that on there. There's little mods that we have to do on the motor before we put it back in the car. I mean, before we put it in the car because it's just that much easier to do it outside of the engine bay. So, without further ado, let's cut to the intro. I got these Hasport mounts painted, um, the chassis brackets, I got those painted. And I think it looks a lot better than leaving it black because I think there's too many colors going on in the bay with this black and stuff like that. So I wanted to emphasize the look of the bay, you know, so it highlights the, uh, the special parts. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we get the motor in the car. Anyways, this is what we got to put together today. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna put these mounts back together. I went ahead and Cerakoted it the same color as the the engine bay. What do you think, Jaden? It looks fire, dude. You like this better or the polish? Cause you said polish before. I like that. Cleaner, ain't it? Mm. We're gonna start putting the uh, brackets into the bay, and I'm not I'm not gonna tighten or torque it yet. Just put it in there. That way we have all all of our bolts in line, and we'll be ready to go. And then of course, once we tighten it, everything down, I'm gonna torque everything. So, hey, look at that contrast, Jada. I see it. Do you see your dad's vision now, bro? Yes, Ragnar. The urn. That one's done. So we're K24. We have to go to the bottom. This whole car is built on downstar bolts. This car, your uncle's car? Yeah, his the most. Actually, mine's is my guy. I'm busy. Cut, 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 cut. So, I had to spread this open because it was <laughs> it's too much. Uh, we gotta make some mods to this. I think it's supposed to be a little tight, not too freely for you to put it in like that. On to the next. Um, okay, now we move on to the motor. 
blue titanium? Yeah. Yo, yeah. we got enough bolts, my guy. Oh, we can do blue, gold, blue, gold. <laughs> That's like us wrapping that. The gold. <laughs> Look at that, chat. What do you think? Comment down below. What do you think? Fire or no? Fire. I tried, Jaden. Got to. Wait, did yours come in black or did you come hey, in black? Hey, if you want chasing jays, I have enough though. Exactly. Boy. Each build has to be unique to its own. So. Exactly. That's why we're slapping the turbo on my Civic. <laughs> Mister, I ain't got a license yet. You wanna slap a turbo on there and kill yourself? Slap me on a turbo. Yeah, all right, my Added guy. Four tanks of NOS in the back. All of right, the my guy. I'm going Brian O'Connor. Hey. Me. Come on, help me put this together, dude. Four on top or four on the bottom? Four on top, three at bottom. One, two, three, four. Man. I said four top. You said three top, four on bottom. Four on top, three bottom. Once again. <laughs> Once again. Oh, the aluminum, dude. No, like not the aluminum. Now. We can put on the head cover. Oh, I thought it was reversible. Ah, uh, darn it. I don't know why Gato decided to put red Loctite on here. <laughs> but I'm not putting it back. Now we can put on our spark loads. You just caught an L, bro. Because, uh... Apparently these are spark plugs guys, but they look like oh, it. Too. Yeah What I usually use for all of our builds are injector dynamics, but I was put on to these new um, they're called Alpha uh, Alpha injection and these are 1300 cc uh, Which is overkill for this dude's car, but you know, we're future proofing it so later when he grows a set of balls, maybe we'll put turbo on there. Turbo with and, Nas. Uh, he'll be good to go. And these I paid with the top hats and also pigtails, which we don't need because um, it's already built into a harness. But I paid 500 bucks for these. Whereas with the injector dynamics, you're looking at close to a thousand bucks. What a thousand? I don't think anybody paid for that. Yep. And I got these because they were blue. Whereas the IDs be red or purple. So I'm just lubing up the O rings so it's easier. So I got this jar of lube from Jaden's room. No, Apparently that's Mobile One been, that doesn't work, boy. He's been whacking off to uh, the nude scenes in Vikings. There are no nude scenes in Vikings. Uh, so usually with these, um, I like installing the injectors first into the fuel rail. Wow. That's where the scratch is. Deja vu, boy. Okay, always delivering power. Alright guys, so for our last video, I got a brand new VTEC solenoid and then I went ahead and I Cerakoted the cover black too, so we don't ever have to worry about it rusting and stuff like that, like the other one. This is the only thing that's a pain with these. Look at that. What do you guys think? Glad we went a brand new one, hey? Okay, guys. The next thing we have to do is I have to tap this to a quarter inch NPT. If you guys remember, 
I made the um, the clamshell fitting for this spot. I mentioned it a couple videos back. So I was gonna use the clamshell on there, but the problem is this hole already existed for the uh, the crankcase uh, the crankcase pressure. But the problem is it's kind of off, and I already grinded this down as much as I could. Any more, we would take we would start to cut into the threads of the, uh, the bolt right here. We can't run the, the clamshell because the intake manifold was hitting the water pump. If you guys remember, it came out to like right here. So I had to grind this all the way down to here. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna do like a regular AN right here. And then um, we can connect the AN to the, uh, the clamshell on the intake manifold if we wanted to if not uh we'll just do regular an for that so we have to tap this so the npts they have a very specific well actually any tap has a very specific drill bit size so for the quarter inch npt it calls for a 7 16 inch drill bit so I picked this up at um, Home Depot, so yeah. All right, here goes nothing, guys. Good luck. So this is kind of sketchy, so I think I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go up. So before we tap it, make sure we want to lubricate um, the bit a little bit right here. And of course, after I'm finished, I'm going to pull the water pump back off and clean it. All right, guys, so we ran into a problem. Uh, I got like maybe two threads in there and then it started hitting this. So I just found something. I hope this works, but this is probably not ideal. It seems like it works. Use your uh, 3 8 inch extension. <laughs> and just turn. So remember, you guys saw it here first. All right. Let's test our, uh, our fitting before we go too deep. Yep. We definitely need to go deeper. So yeah, there's a lot of shards in here, guys. <laughs> Definitely gonna have to clean it up. Okay, my apologies, guys. The memory card ran out of memory on the last clip. So, I went ahead and I finished it. As you can see, get it to focus. I got it in as close as I could. I did put some Honda Bond in there just to make it more secure. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the um, the alternator on there and then put the intake manifold on. Oh, <clears throat> I gotta remove this uh, knock sensor because like with all of our other builds, we're going to be running a Bosch uh, knock sensor. So yeah, so this is a uh, 27 millimeter nut. So yeah, it's a 24, uh, 27 millimeter nut. So I'm gonna take this off. I just ordered it, I forgot to order it. But the Bosch sensor is far superior to the uh, the OEM. Or I mean, it's, it's a lot better than the OEM. And it's cheaper too, because the OEM knock sensor is about 150 bucks. The Bosch knock sensor is only like $30 and I bought it on Amazon. I'll put the link down in the description box below. Um, also, you have to buy like the uh, the little adapter stud for it, and I'll put the link for that in the description below also. But anyways, yeah, let's carry on. We finally got the bolts in, by the way. Ah, yeah. All right, now we can finally put the uh, intake manifold on. Before we put the manifold on, 
I want to clean this up a little bit, get it ready for um, the water bypass. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm using a uh, skunk thermal gasket. So the thermal gaskets, they run cooler. So everything runs cooler with thermal gasket. So I mean, it's around the same price as OEM too. So why not? Why not? So I'm not gonna torque down this manifold yet, just because I have a feeling we're gonna have to take it off again before we put it in the motor. I mean, put it in the engine bay. Yeah. My God, guys, it's looking so good. Um, comment down below if you guys think this is like overkill. So, you know, I know it's kind of overkill for this stuff, but you know, my passion is in building cars. You know what I mean? And I love, you know, coming up with new ideas and innovating. Plus, you know, growing up, uh, my dad was never around. So I'm basically giving my son what I wanted as a child, you know? And I hope one day he realizes and, you know, appreciates it. But yeah, I mean, uh, being a father, man, you just want to give your kids, you know, uh, the best and everything. So, yeah, enough about, <laughs> enough about me. But, um, but yeah, enough with this emotional stuff. But you know, uh, I just, I just enjoy doing this. My mentality has always been do it once, do it right. You know, so that's exactly what we're doing. So, yeah. So, check this out so far, guys. What do you think? I love the way the, the blue on the um, injectors are. But anyways, so I'm gonna call it a night because it's like almost one o'clock here already. So we'll continue tomorrow. I will see you guys tomorrow. What's the next day, guys? What we're gonna do now is put the uh, throttle body on. The one I got is the K-tuned 80 millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, uh, judging by the looks of this, I don't think these bolts are gonna work. Yep, see? Only because this is angled, so it doesn't have much bite. So I'm gonna find a different bolt. All right, <clears throat> so I have a little rant about this. I'm kind of upset, kind of pissed off actually. So I bought the throttle body from K-Series Parts and I bought this Vengeance clamp for it. But the one that they sent me is for the 72 millimeter. So it doesn't work. So yeah, we're basically screwed and I can't return it without a 30% restocking fee. And then I spoke to K-Tune, apparently they're discontinuing the 80 millimeter throttle body. So they no longer make this flange. Kind of screwed, but I 3D printed one. I designed my own flange. So that's getting CNC'd right now, but I'll show you guys how accurate we got this. Hold on. All right, check this out. Take this off, take the, uh, the o-ring off <clears throat> slip it onto our uh, custom made flange all right peep this Ooh, boop. look at that look at this look how accurate Jaden got that on point looks good too so the next thing that we, I want to do is put on our wireworks harness as you guys know we love wireworks and They've been supporting us for all of our builds, actually. We got the no spec. Come on. Right here. No spec. They do phenomenal work. But, <clears throat> you know, being extra as I am, I also got the no spec for the injectors, just like the S2000. So, what I want to do is make a little bracket for this. Um, so it sits like right under the uh, intake manifold and it just holds it up like this. So yeah, let's get to it. We got it to fit, but I'm still not happy with it yet. So, you know, me being me, 
we're gonna over engineer this bracket i want to slim it down a little bit and then kind of make it look better so i'll be right back our over engineered bracket is complete and it'll just slip over like this or like this depending on how we want to mount it i think i'm gonna mount it like this though that way we don't see the bend i need to make one for the s2000 too because the s2000 doesn't have one we just got zip ties right now on the s2000 look at that bam i'm gonna go mount this on the manifold and see how it looks there's our bracket right there fit right here and so the nut part is gonna go up and then this sit like that Sheesh. I was gonna put the uh, the engine harness on the the motor but I realized we need to install the transmission and stuff before we do that so what I'm gonna do now basically we need to put it back on the uh, the PLM engine stand so tomorrow when the radiator comes in i can put the radiator in do the clutch we're ready to throw the motor back into the car so that's what i'm going to do now see you guys in a little bit okay boys it's clutch time we have the we got the motor back on the uh plm stand um guys i do not recommend this stand um i borrowed this from uh a buddy it's actually lewis's and i know he himself also hates this damn thing but yeah no, it doesn't line up nothing lines up it's it's so stupid like we literally only have these two that line up and then nothing over here lines up we're of course missing this leg but this one is literally yeah this is just hanging right there so yeah it gets the job done i wouldn't trust it though anyways so we're gonna install the flywheel first what i have so funny story i was at honda trying to get the pilot bearing for this and uh not knowing that the k-series doesn't really use a bearing it uses this little ring right here um yeah so that was fun times arguing with the guy at honda or me and the we weren't arguing but we were both confused so yeah so the input shaft basically just rides on this and what I'm using here is an 11 16 socket it fits just right so what I got for Jaden is I got the OEM uh, OEM style flywheel from uh, Action Clutch and the reason I went with Action Clutch is because I had it on the Integra and I loved it it was, it was it's a very good clutch guys so yeah thread locker red thread locker red and this is all you really need there you go. see that that's all you need and we have to red the uh red loctite the flywheel because this is spinning so high and it's such a heavy piece because we're running turbo thousand horsepower on the civic Jaden, you can't even handle a lawnmower bro yes i can do you have your license yet on the way it's on the way stay tuned y'all i scared myself or actually Jaden scared me for a minute guys <clears throat> I bought eight of these and he opened the package but he took out only six and then he left the other two in the bag so I thought that was it. I was running around like a chicken with his head cut off because I really wanted to put the motor in today. Jaden doing Jaden things, you know? I dropped it. I just put it on the floor to go help mom. Give me, give me the gun. <laughs> Snap on time. We gotta torque these down. I need to figure out how we're gonna do this. All right, y'all. So basically, wedged it on the crank bolt so it won't move whenever we torque the flywheel. Now, 90. 122 newton meters, which equates to 90 foot pounds. Make sure we break clean the surface, guys. I'm gonna spray it on here. That prevents it from rusting so 
Now, clutch time. By the way, if you guys need the uh, the the flywheel part number, here it is. AC 102 OEHD. And the clutch that we got is the ACR 0489. Okay guys, I must say action clutch is the way to go. It comes with literally everything you need except the bolts. Uh, it comes with the uh, the throw out bearing, um, the tool, and the uh, the pilot bushing, which I bought all that from Honda. With the grease okay, guys. So the clutch is closed sprung disc. Remember we have to blue Loctite. I think it's a 12 millimeter 12 point Jaden. 12 millimeter wrench. Suck it. Stop it. But the 12 point, not the hex one. So why do you... That's it for the motor side guys. Look at that. We are good. Okay. Now we turn to the transmission side. Okay guys, I'm gonna have Jaden do this part. So the first thing we need to do, Jaden, yeah, is we want to lube this real good all the way from the front to back. Just like you're playing with your wee wee, my guy. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna use the uh, Honda Urea grease, Jaden. I just put it all around here? Yeah, but you wanna just put it enough to where it's lubricated but and then right here like you just barely lubricate it because you when this engine spins you don't want this to splash everywhere on the clutch right. does that make sense yeah we just want to lube this up so it slides in in there easier this yeah right here just enough guys because we don't want this to splash all over the clutch all right okay now this goes on here like so so now what you want to do okay now line it up and snap it in there there you go see that Every time you press on the clutch, that's what it does. It pushes onto that pressure plate. Uh, I think we should loop that too. So. What, this? Yeah. All right. Now it's time to put it back into the engine. All right. So, Jaden, you got to guide it for this. All right. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. I'm rushing it. Got it in, guys. Ah. <coughs> okay, guys. Now we just need to put this bolt on. A reverse sensor going in, guys. We good. Last thing we need to do is put this boot on, guys. We got the boot in, we got the uh, reverse uh, sensor in. So we got the boot in, um, but now I'm gonna leave you guys with blue balls because this video carried on for too long already. So in the next episode, we will be putting this motor back into the car. All right guys, that's it for this episode. I'm sorry I had to leave you guys hanging with blue balls like that. But the only thing we have left to do is to install the uh, radiator and then uh, I need to weld uh, some clamshell bungs onto the heater pipe. The engine is ready to go into the car, but I had to fix the, uh, the chip on the engine bracket. So we need to wait for that to dry before we can put it in the car. So with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next episode where I promise you we will install the motor and remember guys um, please subscribe please comment it really helps out the channel 
um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the build so far and I'd love to hear you guys' feedback is it overkill what do you think you know just let me know um, and that way it helps get this video our videos out to everybody else who enjoys stuff like this and as you guys know on the uh, on the channel we really focus on the builds you know we're not so much of a vlog type where we talk a lot we just do what I think you guys would love watching and if you do remember to share these videos and tag your friends and with that being said I came up with a new saying for us and that is to keep regulating and keep authenticating. Peace out and I love you guys.